so when someone is so when someone is choking under pressure, what are the mechanisms that are happening uh, that are taking place? Um, is there more than one? Is it just one that only way in which someone can choke? Yeah, what are what are some of the mechanisms of someone choking under pressure? Yeah, so uh, from a theoretic theoretical perspective, there's a couple of them. Um, one is uh, one theory sh- sort of suggests that um, when you are in a, a situation where you're skilled performance and there's an anxiety increase and you decrease decrease that performance, people tend to self focus or they tend to uh, think about the the mechanics of the skill too much. So they it's like paralysis by analysis. They they tend to overthink shots or overthink um, you know what they're doing and the mechanics of of the shot. Um, and that tends to override the most powerful computer in the br- in the world, which is your brain. Uh, and we don't necessarily want to override our brain, um, but we try to anyway. Uh, and that uh, tends to to get in the way of something that should be already automatic. And that's why we have, um, you know, that's why we say skilled performance needs to be one of those characteristics um, to be to experience choking because it's relatively. Uh, normal, it's similar type of skill rather than so much variability in a, in a performance. So, um, so yeah, like again, if you overanalyze that tends to override that, that brain function and, uh, and that decreases performance as a result. And again, it, it may be an automatic thing or it might be a deliberate thing. Um, we don't necessarily know yet, um, on, on whether it's, you know, the anxiety increases and then we automatically go to, you know, um, these types of theories, these types of mistakes, uh, within a choking response. Um, but, but it just happens. And then the second one, uh, theoretically, uh, it's related to distraction. So, um, instead of concentrating on what you should be doing, um, in, in basketball free throws, for example, looking at the 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 hoop and making sure that you're you know focused on the hoop you tend to think about other things or get distracted by other things whether it's internal or external to the person internal meaning oh i i don't like these somatic feelings um the anxiety that's there the the feelings that i'm experiencing or it could be you know the crowd the crowd noise or or whatever it is it's a distraction whatever the distraction is um, you know, we tend to, to be distracted as a result of the anxiety. And, you know, that's the reason why we change, we change the concentration from really focused on what we need to do and what, what actually gets the best out of us versus, um, not really thinking about the right things to concentrate best. Yeah. I think I have definitely felt both of those models in my professional career as well. Like those are I think it's hard to say which one maybe leads another or if both can t- can both turn up at the same time can you have almost both working in in tandem yeah I think I think we've found some research that indicates that um, some athletes do are, are distracted and then that leads to potentially to over analysis or vice versa um, and I would argue, if we're talking about other theories, uh, I came up, I, I, I proposed a theory in relation to what is called self-presentation. And that is, um, uh, you basically it's uh, impression management. You want to look good in front of, front of other people. And therefore what you do is that looking good idea, uh, increases your anxiety more so than, than other things. And then what I propose, what I, w- I would propose is that that predis- predisposition to be, um, you know, to save face and try to, to perform better um, leads you to um, either the self-focus model, you know, trying to overanalyze or being distracted and or both. Um, you know, uh, I think it's just a matter of, you know, my, some of my theories or my my res- my research is around the personality characteristics that lead someone to be more prone to an impression management related issues and therefore leading to choking a little bit more. So, um, so yeah, I believe, yeah, you, you, you can, anyone can, 
to can choke via the traction or or the uh, self focus model or, and or both. But uh, and we have found some information for both. Yeah, I get that with that self presentation. I see that quite a lot, and I mean, in your own work, yeah. Well, just in sport in general, I see own work, but then actually just being a captain of a of a, a sports team of a cricket team myself and i see especially young players going into going into very challenging and new and then pressurized situations and you can tell i can you can quite literally see this is how they are presenting themselves there is this <laughs> fight that they're putting up to show that they're not feeling the pressure and i kind of get this i kind of get the fact that you do need to put on a bit of a a facade there are there are professional matches where i've gone and played on tv there are games where i've gone out uh, in very pressurized situations and you want to show an external version of yourself that you're absolutely fine but i almost think in really fighting that too much you show another version of yourself which is uh, i just give an example might be you become really fidgety compared to someone when is at normal state completely calm and you're looking around and you're fixing your equipment and your your sort of your eyes are moving all over the place but your your shoulders are, are back and down and your chest is up and and they're kind of not they're not present you can really feel that they're very not present in the moment and they're not actually on task because they're so focused on do i not look like i'm under pressure do i not look like i'm choking do i not look like i'm going to have a bad performance here and they're doing everything they can to to show a good version of themselves so i see that i see that enough to to back that up to say that that is that is definitely going on and and then it probably leads on to two of the models right so it's then which model do they then go to probably yeah and it, that might be it might they might be more prone some people might be born more prone to one model versus the other so and the other thing I want to mention as well is from some of the literature, or at least from uh, working with athletes myself, um, I, th I also think that there are people that feel that um, nervousness or um, think those thoughts in relation to wanting to impress others, but they excel. Now, what differentiates these two types of people we don't necessarily know yet there hasn't been any research that has shown one differentiating thing that actually makes people go in one pathway or the other whether they choke or they excel or um, have clutch performance as they say um, as well so um, yeah it's difficult to to know if even if you talk to people you know before let's say a choking or a clutch performance experience both both categories of people might actually say, "Look, I want to I want to do well in front of these people." But one might go on one pathway to to experience choking, and one might actually go on to the other pathway of of clutch performance. So um, that's the other thing to think about is I just don't know. We don't know yet, you know, which which way people will go, and and what is the determining factor of why people increase versus decrease so um just interesting there too hello you legend if you've enjoyed this video then you might enjoy this video right here which is the full unedited episode go on head up to it up there go also don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on any new videos i'll see you soon